Okay guys, we're going through our mathematical properties and I just wanna start off by letting you know that yes, your PowerPoint looks different than mine. Um, what I go through is what you'll fill in on yours, so I'll kind of point that out as we go. So properties is something that you have learned a few times before, but no one ever seems to really remember them, so I am going to show you all the different ways that I remember them. Starting with associative property. So a couple things, number one, this has the word associate or associate in it okay that's what it's derived from so an associate is like your friend or the people you associate is your friends your groups that you're in okay so that is what this whole property is about so one thing that you could write down um, to help you remember on your ways to remember part of your slide is that associate is who you associate with those are your groups the people you work with okay here's how I remember it though I always call this the love triangle. That's what I would write in my ways to remember. This is my love triangle. And the best love triangle I could think of was from the Hunger Games. So we have Gail and Katniss and Peeta. Gail, Katniss, and Peeta. Okay, so if you've ever seen the movies or if you've ever um, read the books, then you know that sometimes Gail and Katniss are together. They're all in love right? And Peta is left out. And then other times in the movie, Katniss and Peta are together and Gail is left out. This is the same way that the associative property works. It's all about who you're grouped with, right? Here, the order stays the same. Gail, Katniss, Peta, Gail, Katniss, Peta. The order stays the same, but what's grouped together with these parentheses is what's changing. So sometimes the first two are being grouped, sometimes the second two are being grouped, but the order is all the same. This is why I think of it like a love triangle, like the person in the middle, the number in the middle can't decide um, who they're in love with, right? So sometimes they're grouped with this one, sometimes they're grouped with that one, okay? But um, this is what associative property looks like. Who is the Who are you associated with? Who are you grouped with? Okay, so I would write down that it's the love triangle one. I would also maybe mention in my ways to remember that this is about the like the order stays the same. The groups change or the parentheses change. Okay, so that's obviously a little bit silly with the Gale, Katniss, and Peta. So what it really looks like is like this. These are some of your examples you're going to write down. So it says um, examples of addition, examples of multiplication. So for an addition example, this first one. So 5 plus 2 plus 4. Notice in the first one, the 5 and the 2 were being grouped together. They are in love, and the 4 is left out. And on the other side of the equal sign, the 2 and the 4 are in love. They're grouped together, and the 5 is left out. So remember, again, it's all about the groupings. The order stayed the same. 524, 524. The only thing that changed is where those parentheses were. Same for our multiplication. The one down below, that's what you can type in or write in for your multiplication example. So 2 times parentheses x times y is equal to, in parentheses, 2 times x times y. Okay, so remember the whole point of these properties is that there's different ways to solve the same problem or different ways to write the same thing, and they're going to give you the same answer. So I'm just going to kind of prove that to you real quick with this first one. So if I solved the left side of this equation, I would do 5 plus 2, which is 7, and then 7 plus 4, which would give me 11. On the other side of my equation, I would do 2 plus 4, because parentheses first, is 6, plus 5, equals 11. So either way, I'm getting 11 for my answer. So that's just kind of proving to you that yes, those properties do work. Okay, let's go ahead to commutative property. So commutative property, one way I remember this is it's got the word commute in it. Commute. And if you um, think about like your parents commute to work, that's their drive to work, right? Their travel to work or from work, you have a commute to school, you have to get here somehow, um, or different places. So the word commute is how I think about this. And let's see, so can I, sorry, I just realized I have to do this as a slideshow so that you can see this one. So for commutative property, um, I have my house, I live really far away, so I go from my house to school, but I pass a lot of things on the way to and from. So 
I leave my house in the morning and I pass a McDonald's and a million other things and then I get to school. So I went house, McDonald's, school. Then when I go home that night, right, that was my commute. When I go home at night, I do my commute from school back to home. Think about what happens to the order of what I just did. Now I'm starting from the school. I pass McDonald's and then I get to my home. So what happened? Well, the um, order changed. Oh boy, can I get this to go away? There we go. Okay, so that's what commutative property is too. It's just the order changing. So think about your commute to some place, to your friend's house, to school, to whatever. Think what do you pass on the way there? And then think about how it switches on your way back. Same thing here. So we had house, McDonald's, school, or H plus M plus S is equal to S plus M plus H. So the ways to remember is your commute. You can also just know that it's the order that changes. Okay, so that is a thing to remember. You wanna write yourself a little note about commuting. You can draw yourself a picture with the house and the McDonald's and the school, whatever it is, it's gonna help you, okay? Know that the order changes, but it doesn't have to be completely backwards. So there was an addition example right there. Here's a multiplication example. And again, notice two times three times four, four times three times two is completely backwards. But here on our last one, I did seven plus 10 plus two, and then seven plus two plus 10. So only these two switched, the seven stayed in the front. And that is also commutative property, okay? This is one of those properties you've actually probably been using like for a long time in your life and didn't even realize that that's what you were doing because sometimes when you get problems, um, multiplication or addition problems, and you multiply two pieces or add two pieces first before the other piece just because it's easier. Um, like for example, this problem down here at the bottom, if I were gonna solve this, I maybe would decide that I was going to do the 7 plus 2 first to get 9 and then add the 10 because 9 plus 10 is really easy. I know it's 19. Where other people maybe are like, oh, well, this is 17. That's easy. And then just add another 2. That's going to give me 19. Right? A lot of times we do this. Um, so you've done it probably unconsciously before. And now you know why it works. Okay, next is the identity property. So identity is our big key here. Remember, identity is like who you are, okay? So for identity property, what I think about is my identity. So I wake up in the morning and I am Miss McCall, okay? It doesn't matter what happens to me throughout the day. Maybe I have a great day, I have a terrible day. Maybe I decide to go get a haircut. Maybe I change clothes a couple of times. Maybe I do whatever that maybe changes my physical appearance a little bit, but deep down my identity does not change at the end of the day. I am still Miss McCall, I'm still the same DNA deep down inside. Same idea with identity property. So if it's a number, I'm trying to keep the original number at the beginning of the day the same as it is at the end of the day. So with addition, the only way to do that is by adding zero. With multiplication, the way to do that is multiplying by one. So five plus zero equals five. Notice my identity stays the same. I started off as a five, I ended as a five. And same here, I started off as six W, multiply by one, I'm still a six W. Sometimes it's gonna look like this where the one is just in front of the variable, right? One C is just equal to C. We talked about that earlier when we were talking about our parts of an expression and how a variable C has that invisible one in front of it. It's the same exact idea as what this bottom example is. So you've got your addition example, you've got your multiplication examples down there at the bottom, um, right? And your ways to remember something about how identity, you're keeping the number the same. The one thing to really know is this right here. For an addition, it's adding a zero. For multiplication, it's multiplying by one. Okay, it's not multiplying by zero, it's not adding one, because those would not keep your identity the same. Okay, so our zero property of multiplication. I don't have some fantastical way to remember this. I think this one is just like a duh one, right? If you read, it says zero property of multiplication. So like what's gonna happen if you multiply by zero? 
Okay, that's what this property is all about. But here's a way to remember. I think I want a Starbucks drink so badly, right? I can wish for it all day, but if I buy zero of them, I still have zero of them, right? Same thing here. I have a T times zero, it equals zero. So multiply by zero equals zero. Even a number, number times zero equals zero. Okay, there's no zero property of addition. That's only zero property of multiplication. That's because zero property of addition, that's what we just looked at a minute ago, right here, right? When I add zero, that's called the identity property. So that sometimes gets us a little mixed up. We see the zero and we wanna automatically call it zero property, but really it's identity if it's being added by zero. So just always pay attention to what the sign is and what's happening. Did our identity stay the same here? No, because it turned into a zero. And our last one, distributed property, which we talked about a little bit um, earlier this year. So remember this has the word distribute in it. Distribute means to hand out, okay? To distribute papers, right? I handed it out and it's to distribute it equally here. So if I hand it out to one, I have to hand it out to everyone. So the way I think about this is, here's my whole story, ready? So I have these twins in their house, these guys right here, these twins, it's their birthday, okay? So their grandma sent them some gifts. This delivery man is bringing the packages to them. So he is going to deliver a package to the little boy and a package to the little girl. They both have to get their birthday presents. It would be really sad if only one of them got a gift on their birthday. They're twins, so they both need to get their gifts. So what happens is the package gets delivered to the boy. Here he is with his package. Delivered to the girl. Here it is with her package. It was addition in the middle, addition in the, in the middle. Remember, we did this earlier this year. So just remember, you have to hand it out. You have to distribute everything that's inside the parentheses. And then always watch that sign that's in the middle. It still should be in the middle. So the package times the boy plus the package times the girl. Or with numbers, 5 times 4 plus 5 times 3. Okay. The second example... They did kind of the same thing, but they actually went ahead and multiplied, and that's okay. So 3 times A is 3A minus 3 times 2, which is 6. Okay, so sometimes they're going to write it in the problem form like the first one. Sometimes they can go ahead and simplify it and do that multiplication like the second one. And those are all of your examples.